Hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to the first episode of 2022. As a lot of you know, I've been off for just over two weeks, uh, just enjoying my holidays, enjoying my time with my family. And in that time, I gained a lot of new subscribers. So welcome to all of my new subs. I'm so happy that you are here with us. So if you are new here, a quick little backstory to me is that I am coming from a almost decade experience working in the fashion industry as a visual merchandiser and then exited that to become a freelance videographer which ultimately led me to creating this YouTube channel that is basically marrying my two loves. So on this channel we speak to building our confidence in our own personal style and curating a wardrobe that we absolutely love. But as well as that I like to share a lot of little tidbits on my own personal style of being edgy chic minimalist. The channel in a nutshell. So so if you are new here, if you aren't subscribed, if that sounds good, make sure to click that subscribe button and uh, join in the fun. Yeah. Anybody noticing what's happening back here? New little backdrop. It'll probably change and evolve as we go, but this is kind of just a basic start off point. I really liked the drama of the clean backdrop, but I don't know. I was just kind of feeling, feeling a little change up. Who knows? Maybe I'll go back to the clean white backdrop. So uh, comment below and let me know what you prefer. If you prefer the clean white backdrop or if you like this new little lifestyled backdrop. So, so yes, here we are. My first episode for 2022. What is today's episode? We are looking at my seven habits to keep up my edgy, chic, minimalist look every day. Can't take your eyes off me. This would be a good topic for my first episode for 2022 because I do prioritize having that put together edgy chic minimalist look or appearance every day. Yeah, I think people are just sometimes curious on how I maintain that. So these are habits that I have honed over years and years, uh, mainly from when I worked in the fashion industry because you really had to maintain that sort of outfit integrity. Funnily enough, when I started my last job in the fashion industry before I exited to be a freelance videographer, they did actually include that in my job agreement that I had to sign, that I needed to maintain an elevated stylistic appearance. So yeah, I definitely had that pressure of needing to uh, have a put together look every single day. So these are just kind of habits that I formed to make it a lot more effortless um, and not as much work and basically just make it, you know, easy and fun. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So habit number one is maintain outfit formulas. So if you're not familiar with outfit formulas, I've talked about it in the past, it's a basic outfit template or silhouette that is kind of a go-to that you repeat with different pieces because the formulas make it so much easier to just grab a piece and be able to throw an outfit together real quick because you already have it there by default. So a little sub tip or a little side note uh, to go with this one is that before when I was working a sort of nine to five corporate type job, I was actually laying my outfits out the night before and this to me was everything because the night before I could take my time and really figure out what, a, what it was that I wanted to wear and it then just made it so much easier in the morning when I woke up to just have that outfit ready because in the morning and you're rushing it, it's a lot more overwhelming when you you know have to put together an outfit and you only have a few minutes a um, few precious minutes before you have to get out the door so that was very helpful in keeping that style every day as well. Habit number two is researching hairstyles. If you see me scrolling on my phone, seven times out of 10, it's me looking at hairstyles, <laughs> different haircuts. Whether it's just getting inspired to style my hair or getting inspired when I'm gonna get a haircut, I think for me, it makes it one, lot less overwhelming when it comes time to get my hair cut because I've already sort of had time to process. I've already kind of let things sink in on what hairstyle or what haircut I'm sort of 
feeling inspired by at the time at that time or just get re-excited about how I am styling my hair. I have talked about it in the past. I think that edgy hair or just a good haircut or good hairstyle in general is super important. I think it makes it a lot easier to maintain that edgy style because it's always there. So no matter what I put on, I already have a little bit of edge added to the look with my hair. Now you don't necessarily have to have an edgy haircut, but I think having a haircut that you feel really good in, that really makes you feel inspired is really super important. So if you're not feeling, feeling it with your hair, I highly suggest doing some good research, just getting inspired. Maybe it's going to your hairstylist and asking their opinion, but ultimately just making sure that you are prioritizing your hair because it has such a massive impact. Okay, so habit number three is securing at least two go-to pairs of shoes each season. Each season, I always make sure that I have my go-to pairs of shoes. So at least a minimum of two pairs. Not necessarily meaning that I'm going out and buying new pairs of shoes, but just kind of going through my shoes again and it seemed kind of taking an inventory and making sure that I have those go-to shoes. So I usually try to have a pair that's a little bit more casual. Maybe it's like a statement sneaker and then maybe it's a really edgy boot. It's, those are sort of my go-tos, but sometimes it's two pairs of boots. Sometimes it might be a sneaker and a sandal. Sometimes it might be a boot, a sneaker and a sandal, whatever it may be. But what I'm basically looking for in my shoes is that edge. Because the core of my wardrobe or the core of my outfits is usually pretty classic, it's usually pretty sophisticated, I basically prioritize my shoes to make sure they're edgy so that I have that edgy sandwich because I have the edginess of my hair and then my shoes have that edginess. So even if my outfit has no edge within it, maybe has no contrast happening, I know that I'm gonna bring in that contrast with the edge sandwich of my hair and my shoes. So my little rules of thumb is they need to be edgy or super stylistic, like make some sort of style statement. Um, but as well as that, they need to be easy to get on and they need to be comfortable. Cause I know if I don't have those three things going for the shoes, I'm not gonna, they're not gonna be my go-tos. Now, obviously there's a time and a place for the shoes that are, you know, a little bit more specific, a little bit more occasional. I have those two, but for my go-to shoes, they need to have those three things. Because for me, I just know myself, if they're not easy to get on or they're not comfortable, I'm not wearing them on a regular basis. Okay, so habit number four is do my makeup. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, that habit sometimes doesn't happen till like, you know, 11 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, in the morning, but um, I normally always have makeup. Maybe on like a Sunday, you might find me without some makeup. But ultimately for me, I love doing my makeup every day because well, one, I enjoy the ritual of it. I just love makeup. I always have. I don't think necessarily that you need makeup to be beautiful. I, I think there are plenty of people out there that don't wear makeup and they're absolutely gorgeous. But for me personally, I just love makeup um, to kind of accent your features, to accent the features that I already have, to just, you know, add that little bit of oomph. But as well as that, what I love about makeup is I love that I can soften up a look or I can edge up a look with my makeup. So if something's pretty edgy, sometimes I'll have a more softer look. Maybe it's like a fresh faced, fresh glowing face that's very simple, very minimal. But if something's kind of basic, I'll sometimes then I'll edge it up with like the winged tipped eyeliner to just give that little bit of edge and that little bit of style to the outfit. So I always do my makeup for that reason. Okay, so habit number five is keep it classy. So I've gotten in the habit of when I'm choosing my pieces, they're usually pretty classic. Not just because I love having timeless pieces because I know I'm gonna have them for a lot longer, but also because I like that I know that the more classier, more sophisticated pieces are going to round out my sort of default edgy style mood. Like I said, with my edgier hair and my edgier shoes, I know that I already am kind of bringing a lot of edge, so I like to sort of default to the classic pieces. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't, that I always get classic and sophisticated pieces. Like, I definitely love to bring edgier pieces in as well. The more sophisticated pieces, it's gonna round out the edginess, and it's gonna help me to maintain that chic, minimalist side of 
my style, even for those casual days of running errands. Number six is only buy what's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, buy. I have learned my lesson in the past for sure of if it's not comfortable, just don't buy it. Because I've been there where I've bought like a sweater that I just love because I love the style of it, I love the print of it or the color of it, whatever it is, but it itches me. It just itches and it's just completely uncomfortable to wear, yet I hold on to it and it just sits in my closet. And then when I come across it and wanna wear it, I then am sat there with decision fatigue and overwhelmment at the fact that I really wanna wear it, but I know that it's super uncomfortable. So I'm just standing frozen in my closet for five minutes straight, not moving, debating on whether or not I should wear that dang sweater. No. When you have pieces like that in your closet that just aren't really doing anything for you, all they're doing is then creating noise and it's making it a lot harder to style an outfit every day because you're just distracted by all the noise as well. Whereas when you eliminate that noise, it allows for you to see what you have. It allows for you to see your wardrobe in a totally different way. And it makes it a lot easier, a lot less overwhelming to choose your outfits every day. As you can see, <laughs> having the habit of only buying what's comfortable has a big impact. Okay, habit number seven is always ask where's the contrast? If you've been here for a while, you know that I love contrast, that I feel that contrast is the way to an elevated style. It's the way to round out a look. It's the way to balance out a look. Whatever I'm wearing is where is the contrast? So an example of this is if I'm wearing loungewear, I am definitely asking the question, where's the contrast? So just meaning I'm gonna either wear just like a really cool edgy chunky boot to contrast that casualness or styling a blazer with a pair of sweatpants. So it's just making sure that I'm bringing in that contrast to whatever it is that I'm wearing to make sure that I'm elevating the style so that it's just not another run of the mill sort of look. Even if it's wearing a fully classy, sophisticated look, maybe it's a pair of trousers with a blazer and a shirt, uh, I'm asking, where's the contrast? So maybe, yes, I'm bringing a bit of contrast with my hair, but then it's like, where can I bring more contrast? So my shoes will very unlikely be a classic sophisticated shoe. It's usually gonna be something that's a little more sexy, a little bit more edgy, or sometimes even casual. So I'm bringing in some contrast to basically round out the look to give the balance and to ultimately elevate the look to another level. Okay, so there you have it. Those are my seven habits to keep up my edgy, chic, minimalist look. my first episode of 2022. Definitely comment below and share with us if you have habits that you like to use on a daily basis to maintain your style. Okay, so if you did like today's episode, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe for future weekly episodes. You stay healthy, stay safe, love and support each other, and we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye. Next.